So a pleasant day to everyone. I hope you stay safe and dry. No? So now we'll be starting to discuss a new topic, which is the chapter 4, Neural Conduction and Synaptic Transmission. So how neurons send and receive signals. So I hope that you really understand this specific part of biopsychology because it's a little bit hard and I think it's one of the hardest part of biopsychology. So I have introduced to you the anatomy of the neurons in chapter 3 as you can remember. So this chapter introdu introduces you to their different functions. So how neurons conduct and transmit electrochemical signals through the nervous system. So we will start with a description of how signals are generated in resting neuron. No? Then we will follow or then it follows the signals as they are conducted through neurons and transmitted across synapses to another neuron. So neuron to neuron siya. It concludes with a discussion of how drugs are used to study no, the relation between synaptic transmission and behavior. The following case study that I will uh, present to you is a case study of a patient with Parkinson's disease. So I hope that this will help you appreciate why knowledge of neural conduction and synaptic transmission is an integral part of our subject, biopsychology. So, I will introduce to you another case. So, the Roberto the Lizard, a case of Parkinson's disease. So, let's start. I have become a lizard, he began. A great lizard frozen in dark, cold, strange world. Grabe no, introduction pa lang. Uh, ganyan na agad yung kanyang <laughs> entry. So, his name was Roberto Garcia de Orta. Okay. He was tall, thin man in his 60s. But like most patients with Parkinson's disease, he appeared to be much older than his actual age. <clears throat> Not many years before, he had been active, vigorous businessman. Then it happened... Not all at once, but suddenly, not suddenly rather, but slowly, subtly, insidiously. So, dahan-dahang nag-creep in sa kanya yung Parkinson's disease. He turned like a piece of granite, walked in slow shuffling steps. So, yung lakad niya, yung paa niya halos hindi nagkakahiwalay kapag naglalakad siya. Parang nakikiskisan halos yung dalawang paa niya. And he spoke in a monotonous whisper. Pabulong lang, tas pantay-pantay yung tono. So, ano ba yung kanyang mga first symptoms? His first symptom was a tremor. Mm -mm. So, it's not a disabling one. No, he said. My hands shake worse when they are doing nothing at all. It is a symptom called tremor at rest. So, kapag wala daw ginagawa yung kamay niya, doon mo makikita yung symptoms ng Parkinson's which is shaking. So, kapag may ginagawa naman, hindi naman nagsishake. The other symptoms of Parkinson's disease are not quite so benign. Hindi pa sila ganun ka-observable. They can change a vigorous man into a lizard. This includes rigid muscles, mm -hmm. A marked poverty of spontaneous movements, yung mga bigla ang paggalaw, hindi niya na yung nakaya or nagagawa. Difficulty in starting to move and slowness in executing voluntary movements once they have initiated. Okay, yung kapag meron na siyang trinay na gawin or galawin sa kanyang uh, body parts, no? Ang bagal, no? Bagal na execute So, the term reptilian stare is often used to describe the characteristic which is lack of blinking and widely opened eyes gazing out of a motionless face which is a set of features that seems more reptilian than human. Okay. So, uh, can you imagine yung mga crocodiles or alligator when they are basking in the sun? Or kapag wala sila sa tubig? Napapansin nyo, di ba? Nakastay lang sila sa mampang. And nakatitig lang sila halos, hindi nagbiblink, nakatitig sa kawalan. So parang ganun yung nangyari kay Mr. De Orta. Okay, so 
truly no a lizard in the eyes of the world <laughs> so ano nangyari ba sa brain ni Mr. De Orta so we will look upon this uh, biologically so a small group of nerve cells called the substantia nigra which is a black substance were accountably dying okay so these neurons make a particular uh, chemical called dopamine no so which they deliver to another part of the brain which is known as striatum as the cells in the substantia nigra die the amount of dopamine they can deliver goes down mababa the striatum helps control movement and to do that normally it needs dopamine so ano yare so nagkakaroon nga ng problem no Nag namamatay yung mga neurons niya or yung cells din sa substantia nigra which releases no or creates dopamine which is responsible for movements no yung dopamine na yun kailangan ng striatum para magkaroon ng movement pero kapag kumukha ng dopamine so magkakaroon tayo ng problem Mr. D. Orta's neurologist prescribed L-dopa which is the chemical precursor of dopamine so yung L-dopa no, hindi siya yung mismong dopamine. So, ito yung nagtitrigger para mag-release yung substantia nigra ng dopamine. No? And in order to trigger that, kailangan ng tinatawag nating uh, chemical precursor, which is L-dopa. So, para siyang signal na, na kailangan mo mag-release ng dopamine. So, ano lang siya? So, let's continue. He still had a bit of tremor. So, meron pa rin konting panginig. But his voice became stronger. His feet no longer shuffled. And his reptilian stare faded away. So, umoki na. Nawala na yung kanyang rigidity. No? Meron pa rin siyang konting uh, tremor or panginginig ng body parts, such as yung hands. Pero yung voice niya umoki na. Yung paa niya hindi na sila nag-shuffle, halos nagkikiskisan. At hindi na siya tumititig na parang crocodile or lizard no? sa kawalan. So, once again, he was able to perform with ease daily activities of life. Eating, bathing, writing, speaking, even making live love rather with his wife so umuwi na siya medyo umuwi na siya no pero he has been destined to spend his life trapped inside a body that was becoming increasingly difficult to control but his life was repealed at least temporarily because of l dopa okay so why is that our uh, case for today no because we will be talking about the neural conduction which is an electrical process. If you could remember the orta, no? Nagkakaroon ng problem yung pag, pag, uh, pag-send ng dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter, to another part, which is, which is striatum. No? Wherein, kailangan-kailangan ng striatum yung dopamine para makapag-function siya at para magkaroon, makakreate ng voluntary movement. So, under neural conduction, we'll be talking about the first resting membrane potential. Okay. So, as you are about to learn, the key to understanding how neurons work and how they malfunction is the membrane potential. So, the membrane, the membrane potential is the difference in electrical charge between inside and outside of the cell or the neurons. So, let's start. So, every cell has a voltage. So, there is a difference in electrical charge across its, its plasma membrane called membrane potential. So, tandaan natin yan, ha? Lahat ng cells niya, especially neurons, meron siyang voltage across sa plasma niya, no? Or yung fluid, no? Doon sa mismong neuron, sa cell body. So, membrane potential yung tawag doon. The resting potential is a membrane potential of the neuron not sending signals. So, when it's resting, no? When it's not doing uh, its job yet, no? Meron tayong tinatawag na resting potential or resting membrane potential. So, yun yung potential ng neuron not sending signals or yung voltage niya. So, changes in mem membrane potential acts as signals, transmitting and processing information. So, paano natin record yung resting membrane potential? So, to record the membrane potential, kailangan na iposition natin yung tip ng isang electrode. If you're familiar with the electrode, so, uh, machine yan na may dalawang wire, meron siyang negative and positive na tips. No? Para record yun, yung isang tip niya, kailangan ma-penetrate or maipasok sa loob ng neuron at yung another electrode, no, another tip niya, ay nasa outside ng neuron na tinatawag nating extracellular fluid. Bakit? Para makita natin yung differences. No? So, the intercellular electrodes, which is the microelectrodes, ito yung pinasok natin doon sa neuron, 
it must be fine enough to pierce the neural membrane. So, kailangan sobrang fine niya, no? sobrang liit niya, na kaya niya mag-penetrate sa neuron without severely damaging it. No? Their teeth are less than 1,000 of millimeter in diameter. So, grabe, no? Pero nakakreate ang tao ng ganun. No, nakakreate siya ng microelectrodes na capable na makapasok sa isang neuron na hindi siya no, dinadamage ng sobra. So, may damage po ba, sir? Yes, may damage. Kasi matatamaan natin yung cell wall at saka cell membrane. Papasok mo yung penetrate sa neuron. Pero, mas madali siyang mag-regenerate kasi very fine, na lang, very fine naman siya. So, ito yung itsura ng electrode. So, dyan, medyo malaki. Medyo uh, in-exaggerate yung size ng neuron. Pero, alam naman natin na ang neuron ay microscopic. So, ito yung sinasabi natin electrode yung nasa gitna. So, connected siya sa isang computer or laptop para ma-monitor natin yung kanilang voltage. And kung makikita nyo, mayroong dalawang wire dyan. Yung una ay mayroong pointed part, which is yung micro-electrode na capable na mag-penetrate sa loob ng neuron. No? And the other one no? is outside the neuron, which is in the plasma. No? Okay, so rec uh, recording res membrane potential. This indicates that the potential inside the resting neuron is about 70 millivolts less than outside the neuron. So, tandaan na, yung resting membrane potential is 70 millivolts less than outside the neuron. Kung sasabihin natin na ang kalagitnaan ng labas at loob ay zero, ito ay, yung nasa loob ay, neg ay 70 millivolts less than outside. When both electrode tips are in fluid, the voltage difference between them is zero. However, when the tip of the electrode is inserted in the neuron, a steady potential of negative 70 millivolts is recorded. So, tandaan nyo, negative 70 millivolts is a cost, constant number. Ito yung uh, exact, no? estimated rather, uh, constant siya pero ito yung ginagamit na natin na steady potential. No? Ito yung nasa loob ng neuron. The voltage between them is zero. So, tandaan nyo na, itong negative 70 millivolts is the resting membrane potential. So, the steady, mem the steady membrane potential of negative 70 millivolts is called the neuron's resting potential. In its resting state, with the negative 70 millivolts charge built up across its membrane, the neuron it said is said to be polarized. No? Again, remember that. Kapag, kapag resting state, the neuron is polarized at negative 70 millivolts. So, now we will go to the ionic basis of resting potential. So, pag-usapan natin later on itong ions na tinatawag natin. Sir, ano po ba itong ions? So, in a mammalian neuron at resting potential, the concentration of potassium, which is calcium, is highest inside the cell, where the concentration of sodium is highest outside the cell. And the chloride ion is evenly distributed. So, ito yung mga makikita natin, tinatawag natin ions. So, familiar kayo dito because these are elements. Pero, these specific elements or ions can be found in the neurons itself, no? And they are responsible for the activities of the neuron, the sending of the nerve <coughs> impulses. So we have here the potassium, which has positive charge, the sodium with positive charge, and the chloride with negative charge. Ion are particles that is electrically charged. It could be positive or negative. Kahit negative yan, it is still electrically charged. Sodium potassium pumps use the energy of adenosine triphosphate to maintain this potassium and sodium gradients <coughs> across the plasma membrane. This concentration gradient represents chemical potential energy. So, ito yung nagre-represent ng potential energy ng isang resting membrane. So, to continue, the opening of ion channels in the plasma membrane converts chemical potential to electrical potential. So, yung ion channels, ito yung dinadaanan nung nasabi nating ions kanina. Kinoconvert nitong uh, yung ion channel na to, yung chemicals na yun, into an electrical potential. With this force, wherein the ions can pass. So, if you can remember, no, electric impulses ang responsible sa pagde-deliver ng messages from one neuron to another neuron. A neuron addressing potential contains many opening potassium channels and fewer opening of the sodium channels. So, potassium diffuses outside of the cell. The resulting buildup of negative charge within the neuron is the major source of membrane potential. So, merong buildup ng negative charge sa loob ng neuron. So, negative charge yun, pero hindi pa siya particularly connected 
or nakakabit sa specific ions or elements as we know, no? Pero it is the reason why there is a major source of membrane potential. No, may voltage na bago pa man yung ion channel na nan- yung ions ra- nandoon. So there is a substantial pressure on sodium ions to enter the resting neuron. The pressure is two types. We have first the electrostatic pressure from the resting membrane. So ito yung nagko-cause ng movements, no? Nag-movements ng sodium ions. First, we have the electrostatic pressure from the resting membrane potential because opposite charges attract negative millivolts charge attracts positively charged sodium ions into resting neuron. What does that mean? Pakinggan natin tong mabuti kasi nakakalito to. Itong electric electrostatic pressure isa to sa mga reason kaya nagkakaroon ng movement between ions, no? From inside the neuron to outside the neuron. Kung titingnan natin under electrostatic pressure from resting membrane potential which is negative 70 millivolts because the opposite charge attracts the negative 70 millivolts which is yung inside ng isang resting membrane. So, positively charged sodium ions are attracted to the resting neuron. Usually, itong mga sodium ions ay nasa labas ng neuron and since negative 70 or negatively charged yung nasa loob ng neuron, na-attract sila papasok sa isang resting neuron. Meron din tayong tinatawag na random motion pressure. So, isa to sa another reason kung bakit nagkakaroon ng movement. For sodium ions to move down to their concentration gradient, so, concentration gradient, ito yung nag-build up sila. So, maraming uh, ions na nag-build up or nagsasama-sama. So, example, like all ions in a solution, the ions in neural tissue are constant, are in constant random motion which become evenly distributed because they are more likely to move down to their concentration regions than up them. That is, they are more likely to move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration, vice versa. What does it what does that mean? So dahil naiipon sila sobrang dami, now when looking upon the example of magnets, no, we all know that positive charges repels and the negative charges attracts. Tama. So dito, ang nangyari kaya nagkakaroon ng random motion pressure, masyado nang nabibuild up yung sodium ions sa labas ng cells. So dumadami sila so kailangan nilang mag-move para iwasan isa, isa because they repel each other. Unlike yung electrostatic pressure naman, since positive itong sodium ion natin, no, na-attract no, ng electrostatic pressure yung sodium channel papunta sa sodium channel. Pero there's a catch, hindi agad-agad or madaling makapasok ng sodium channel sa neuron. So, why do sodium ions under electrostatic pressure pressure from random movement not come rushing into neurons, thus reducing resting membrane potential? Siyempre, when we Mathematically, when we add a positive to negative, no, titingnan natin kung si anong mas higher. So kung sino mas higher magpa-prevail. Pero bakit hindi, no? Hindi basta-basta na kahit gugustuhin man ng sodium na makapasok sa neurons, bakit hindi sila basta-basta makapasok, no? And kapag nakapasok sila, magkakaroon ng reduced resting membrane potential or yung voltage difference. Sodium ion channels and resting neuron are closed. And daana, we have what we call the ions, which is the sodium, potassium, and chloride. And we have what we call the ion channels. So, ito yung daanan para makapasok sila at makalabas nun sa neurons. So, sodium ion channels in resting neurons are closed. Thus, reducing the flow of sodium ions into the neuron. We're in contrast, we're in contrast rather, potassium channels are open. But only few ions exit because they are largely held inside the negative resting membrane potential. Open yung, ano, open yung potassium channel, unlike yung sodium channel na closed, no? Pero, since open nga yung channel yun, uh, mas na-held up yung potassium inside the resting membrane, no? Because they are positively charged and negatively charged yung inside ng neuron, mas madaling na-held up yung potassium. Hindi sila agad-agad nakakalabas. So, in 1950, so, these two people, which is Alan Hodgkin and Andrew Huxley, become interested in the instability of resting membrane potential, where some sodium ions manage to in- enter despite closed sodium channels. So, paano sila nakakapasok? Di ba close nga po, sir, at ang naka-open lang po is yung potassium channel? No? So, they manage to enter despite the closed sodium channels, and some potassium ions do exit. So, kahit ina-attract sila ng negative charge, na may nakakalabas pa rin uh, potassium channel. They discovered that when a leak sodium ion were actively transported inside, other sodium ion were transported out same with potassium ions 
which is called the sodium potassium pump. So every time, parang ano, ang nangyari niyan, yung sa loob ng neurons, may specific slot lang na pwede. And kapag may nakakapasok or nakakalusot sa closed gate, which is the ion channel of the sodium, na nakapasok na sodium, merong maipapump out din palabas na sodium, no? Galing sa loob. So hindi ibig sabihin na close yung ion channel, wala ng sodium at all dun sa loob. Meron pa rin nakakalusot, no? Pero parang may tinatawag na tayong parang slots na hindi lahat-lahat ay nakapasok, no? Every time may nakapasok, meron ding mapapalabas. Parang ganun. So, ang tawag dito ay sodium potassium pump. So, what does it mean? Such ion transport is performed by mechanism in the cell membrane that continually exchange 3 sodium ion inside neuron and 2 potassium ion inside. So, kapag may nakapasok na tatlong sodium ion, no? sa loob ng isang neuron, mer- yung sodium potassium pump, which is a mechanism, e-exchange niya. Hihigop siya ng tatlong potassium mula sa outside papasok, tapos papalabas niya yung tatlong sodium palabas. So, parang ganun yung nangyari. Tuloy-tuloy yan. Meron tayong sodium potassium pump. Every time yung nakakapasok na sodium, na hindi naman supposed yung makapasok, ipapump siya. No? Yung tatlong sodium na makakapasok, ipapalit siya sa dalawang potassium. So, yun yung equivalent nila. So, ions and the resting membrane potential. So, ayan, nakita na natin yan ha. Sodium, uh, potassium, they are positively charged. Sodium are positively charged also. The chloride is a negatively charged ion. So, sir, bakit ang pinag-usapan lang natin is yung potassium and sodium? So, mamaya malalaman natin kung ano bang purpose ng chloride and bakit andyan din siya. So, ions and the resting membrane potential. Inside the neuron, we have the potassium which is positively charged, and the protein. The protein itself is yung negatively charged part ng neuron. So, outside the neuron, there is sodium. No? There is a concentration of sodium and chloride. Kung makita nyo, yung protein ay negatively charged, and yung chloride ay negatively charged also. So, ano ba talaga ang gustong gawin ng ions na to? Ang gulo-gulo nila. Para mas maintindihan natin, in a way, no? So, ito yung cost ng movement nila. Nabanggit ko na ito kanina, pero babalikan na natin. Paano sila gumagalaw at paano sila pumapasok at tumalabas? We have first what we call the force of diffusion, which is the random motion. No? It's great getting crowded in here. So, naiipo na dumadami yung concentration gradient na tinatawag natin sa specific ion, such as sodium. So, ang tendency, kailangan nilang magkalat-kalat kasi sobrang dami na nila. No? Kanyari, sa labas sila. Nagkakalat-kalat sila and, ayun nga, kailangan nilang gumalaw-galaw at iwasan isa't isa dahil nagre-repel sila sa isa. And we also have the electrostatic pressure. Ito naman yung isa pang cause ng movement wherein negatively charged yung loob ng isang resting membrane neuron, no, potential, no, wherein positive naman yung other ions. So, there is what we call the differential permeability. If you could remember the term permeability, it is the capacity of a specific chemical or a substance to penetrate specific walls or objects. So, there is what we call the playing pre- favorites daw. Yung potassium daw at saka yung chloride, they can pass easily inside the neuron, even a resting nerve. No? Yung sodium, they are not so easy to pass to the membrane. So, yung proteins, hindi na sila nakakapasok. Alam natin, may protein sa loob ng neurons. May protein din sa labas ng neurons. Pero hindi na nakakapasok pa dahil parang fully loaded na yung protein doon. So, again, yung ion channels, they are like doors. No? So, dito po mapasok yung ating mga ions. Tapos, so, natatandaan natin yung sodium potassium pump kanina. Mm-hmm. Ito yung tatlong sodium, papalitan ng dalawang potassium. Sodium mula sa labas, no? may tendency minsan na makapasok, no? because, but because of the sodium ion pump, ipapump niya pa rin palabas yung tatlong sodium, tapos hihigop siya ng dalawang potassium. Pero that does not mean na walang sodium or potassium outside. Meron pa rin. Pero mas concentrated sila on different parts. We're in potassium concentrated sa loob, sodium concentrated sa labas. So, ito yung binanggit ko kanina. So, putting it all together, we can see that the sodium ions want to go inside the neuron because there are fewer of them inside. No? Ang dami-dami na nila sa labas. So, gusto nilang makapasok. No? Nire-repel nila ba't isa. So, meron din tinatawag na negative charge that attracts positive charge. So, gusto nila makapasok talaga. Pero, hindi sila makapasok dahil neurons membrane is not very permeable to sodium ions. No? 
meron tayong tinatawag na ion channels na sarado. And yung sodium ion pump, they keeps kicking them out. Therefore, most sodium ions stay outside the neuron. How about the potassium ions? So, yung potassium ions naman, same sa situation ng sodium, gusto din nilang lumabas. No? Bakit? Because mas konti sila sa labas, no? and there is what you call the force of, force of diffusion. And neurons' membrane are very permeable to potassium ions. Kaya nilang makalabas dahil open yung gate nila kung tutuusin. At saka konti lang sila sa labas, ang dami nila sa loob. So, parang may tendency rin na kailangan nilang maghiwahiwalay. Pero, merong positive leak charge, no? Dun sa labas ng neuron, kaya nare-repel sila. Hindi rin sila agad-agad makalabas. Bakit nare-repel? Kasi parehong positive. Kung titignan nyo, ang potassium ay positive, no? And sa labas, positively yung charge. Positive rather, no? So, they are repelled. Same to the magnet. Sodium potassium pump keeps kicking them back inside or into the neuron. Therefore, most potassium ions is stay inside the neuron. Okay, napag-usapan na natin yung sodium, napag-usapan natin yung... Okay, so now we have here the chloride ions naman which can't make up their minds. So, hindi siya magpirmi. Hindi niya alam ang gagawin niya. Bakit? The chloride ions want to go inside the neuron because of the following reason. There are fewer of them inside. Ang dami-dami na nila sa labas at gusto nila pumasok sa loob. No? Parang ano lang yan, same dun sa movement ng sodium at saka potassium kanina sa pressure. Also, neurons membrane is very permeable to chloride ions. Madali sila makapasok kasi may passes sila. No? Open yung kanilang channel, pwede silang lumabas, pasok lang dun sa neuron. Pero gusto rin nilang mag-stay sa labas. Bakit nila gusto mag-stay sa labas? First, because yung charge sa labas ay positive. If you could see, no? Yung charge ng chloride ay negative. So, kung titignan ulit natin yung magnet as an example, so negatively charged plus positively charged is equal to attraction. So, hindi sila mag -permi. <laughs> so, Therefore, chloride ions keep going back and forth and the distribution of chloride ions is held at equilibrium. So, pabalik-balik lang sila outside and inside the neuron. So, ayan. So, ito yung kanilang concentration inside and outside a mammalian neuron. If you can see here, yung potassium natin, intercellular or yung sa loob, meron tayong tinatawag na 140 no? concentrations inside. Wherein, ang extracellular concentration outside, meron ng lima. No? Dito naman ang sodium naman, sa loob, meron lang doon na 15. Tulad na manggit ko kanina, hindi naman ano, at all na walang sodium sa loob at walang potassium sa labas. Meron pa rin. No? Pero yung concentration nila ay nasa loob at nasa labas. Wherein sa labas, ang concentration ng isang neuron ay 150. Yung chloride naman, no? which is negatively charged inside the neuron daw, ay 10. Kukunti lang sila. Kaya sa labas, sila ay mas marami, 120. No? So, kaya may tendency na gusto nitong pumasok dito sa loob pero gusto niya rin mag-stay sa labas kasi nga positively charged and negatively charged siya. Also, large anions, ito yung binanggit ko na nasa loob na ng cells which is the proteins, meron na sila, wala na sila sa labas, hindi na, hindi na need. No? Protein na mismo yung nag-build doon sa neurons which is negatively charged. So, ayan, kung makikita natin, this is a graphical representation yung mga sinabi natin kanina. These are the ion channels, and this, this are the, and this is, rather, is the ions. So, kung makita natin din itong sodium, napakarami ng sodium sa labas at kukunti lang sa loob. And the potassium, napakarami ng potassium sa loob ng cell at napakakunti sa labas. Ito yung ions natin, no? Sodium channel, iisa lang siya kung makita natin dyan. Ito yung potassium channel, mas marami, no? Ito yung sodium-potassium pump. Para rin siyang ion channel, Pero makita nyo, may tatlong islat. So, ano yung tatlong islat? Yung katumbas ng tatlong sodium, no, napapasok dito para ilalabas niya, no, meron siyang hihigupin na dalawang potassium mula sa outside. So, yun yung sodium potassium pump. It's a mechanism. So, ayan, potassium wants to go out. Sodium wants to go in. <laughs> so, dito yan, makikita sa location ng neuron malapit sa dendrites.
Okay. So, permeability yan. Sige, hindi ko na ano. Kung nakita nyo, medyo nakaka-trigger yung computation. Actually, inaral namin yan nung masters. Pero, hindi nyo na necessarily pang aralin to. Don't worry, hindi ko na rin siya i-add. No? Kasi kailangan nyo ng scientific calculator. Then, and medyo hassle magturo ng computation kapag online. Mas prefer ko pa rin magturo ng uh, live or face-to-face. -face. So, probably next time. <laughs> Pero don't worry, hindi ko na rin sa ating exams. So now, we will go to the generation, concentration, and integration of the post-synaptic potentials. So, getting the membrane potential to change from negative 70 millivolts. No? So, we will know the types of post-synaptic potentials and how they are conducted. <laughs> so, when neurons fire, so, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, you could remember, it's a resting membrane potential. Walang firing up na neuron, no walang activity pa. So, when neurons fire, on the other hand, they release from their terminal buttons the chemical called neurotransmitters. So, familiar kayo sa neurotransmitters. What are the neurotransmitters that you know? So, kung natatandaan nyo ka na si Roberto de Orta, may nabanggit na isa daw, which is the dopamine. So, ano pa ba yung ibang alam natin? So, can you name some? Serotonin, cortisol, melatonin, na? Siguro narinig yun yung mga yan. They are neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic clefts and interact with specialized receptors. So, humihiwalay sila dun sa synaptic clefts kapag nirelease sila ng buttons and mag-interact sila sa receptors or yung mga nagre-receive sa kanila. When bound to the receptors, kapag nareceive na sila, they, are, they typically have one of these two effects depending on the neurotransmitter receptor and post-synaptic neuron in question. So, may comparison pa yan. So, kahit nag-release yung body mo ng melatonin, which is uh, one of the relaxing hormones or sleep hormones, no? depende pa yan sa neuron mo no? kung ano ang kanyang maging response. Because there's something that is called postsynaptic potential that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Postsynaptic potential can do one of the two things. So, ito yung possible reaction. Kapag nag-release na ng neurotransmitters, ng chemicals, at nag-receive ng reaction, Receptors, ito yung pwedeng gawing dalawa. First is depolarized neuron. No? And next is hyperpolarized neuron. So, can you remember the term polarization a while ago? So, para mas maintindihan natin, let's continue. First, we'll go to the, to the depolarized or depolarization. So, depolarization is decreased in resting potential. So, it becomes less negative. So, from negative 70, magiging negative 67, negative 60, negative 50. So, magiging less negative. So, ayan yan. There is increase of the likelihood that the neuron will fire or magkaroon ng response yung neuron. Excitatory postsynaptic potential ang tawag dito kapag nag-depolarize ang isang neuron. No? So, tandaan itong mga facts ha, at, or itong mga term. During depolarization, magkakaroon ng decrease in resting potential. They become less negative. So, from negative 70, bababa sila ng bababa, negative 67 onwards. And there is an increased likelihood or possibility that the neuron will fire. And this is called excitatory postsynaptic potential. Kapag nagkakaroon ng excitatory postsynaptic potential, no? magkakaroon ng firing of neurons possibly. Or, Pwede rin mag-hyperpolarize. Kapag hyperpolarize naman, there is an increase in the resting membrane potential. So, it become more, more negative. So, from negative 70 to negative 72 millivolts, ano ibig sabihin nun? There will be a decreased likelihood that a neuron will fire. Pero tayo, ito naman yung tinatawag natin inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So, kung yung EPSP kanina ay excitatory, yung IPSP is inhibitory. So, tandaan nyo yung mga term na yan. During hyperpolarization, meron tayong tinatawag na decreased likelihood in the firing of neurons or inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Ito yung pangalawang pwedeng maging respond or response ng isang neuron kapag nakareceive na siya ng neurotransmitter. So, in, in application, pa, in application pa natin maintindihan yan. Kunyari, inaantok na kayo. No? Gusto nyo magpahinga. 
So, ano ang kailangan yung gawin para mas madali makatulog? So, case to case lang to. Ah. Ang gagawin ninyo, possible na papatayin yung ilaw, no? And darkness, no? Kapag humina yung photoreceptors natin, it can cause triggering of release of melatonin, no? Melatonin is sleep hormone, resting hormone, no? So, mas mapapadali yung pag-i-sleep niya. So, ang mangyari, no? Ah... Uh, Uh, ma-induce yung sleep sa inyo or magkakaroon ng hyperpolarization. Bakit hyperpolarization? Hindi na magpa-fire up yung neuron. Yun yung i-receive niya. Papakalmahin niya yung mga other neurons, yung body niyo, yung other parts, yung organs, no? Para mas <clears throat> madali kayo makapunta sa rest. Pero pwede rin mag-depolarize, no? Kahit nag-send na kayo ng melatonin sa body niyo, pinatay niyo yung ilaw, no? Pero ang ginawa niyo, nag-cellphone pa kayo, kinakalaban niyo, nagkakaroon kayo ng EPSP. No? And usually, IPSP and EPSP battle with each other. At kung sino yung mas malakas, sila yung nananalo. It could be hyperpolarization or depolarization. So, there are a bunch of EPSP and IPSP happening at once. So, get a neuron to fire. So, how can we be able to fire a neuron? So, EPSP and IPSP travel until they reach the near of axon hillock. Yung almost dulo ng cell body ng isang neuron. So, remember, EPSP makes resting membrane less negative. Some from negative 70 to negative 68. No? And IPSP make membrane stressing potential more negative. From negative 70 to negative 75. Less negative, EPSP. More negative, IPSP. So, EPSP and IPSP are graded response. So, tandaan nyo tong term na graded response, ha? It means that their amplitude are proportional to the intensity of signals that elicit them. Weak signals elicit animal, small rather, postsynaptic potentials, while strong signals elicit larger ones. So, saan ang galing yan? So, anong ibig sabihin ng graded response? So, kung mas malakas yung stimulus, for example, napasok kayo, depende sa init, no? Mas malakas din yung maging reaction nyo, it could be EPSP or IPSP. Kapag yung init ay kaya nyo i-tolerate, pwede yung IPSP na yan. Instead na alisin nyo, okay lang. Nahawa ka yung init kasi warm siya. Kaya nyo i-tolerate. Pero kapag yung init niya ay, for example, boiling kettle, yung kumukulong takore, no? Hinawakan nyo. Siyempre, napakataas na stimulus yun dahil pain signal yun. So, malakas na EPSP rin yun. Ang mangyari, magbabat in yung inyong reflex na bigla nyo matatanggal yung kamay ninyo. So, mananalo yung EPSP. So, again na nakadepende sa intensity ng signal na nag-i-elicit yung kanilang response. Graded response yun. When combined, they cancel out each other and whichever is stronger wins. Yun yung example na binigay ko kanina. Kung meron kayong hawakan mainit. So, di ba minsan kinatry yung hawakan kung kaya ba? Kapag kaya, IPSP ang mangyari. I-inhibit yung pain receptors. Ah, kaya ko. Kaya ko hawakan. Pero kapag medyo sobrang init and it can cause damage to your skin, EPSP yun, strong signal yun. Ang mayari, mayroon kayong reflex na tatanggal, matatanggal bigla yung kamay ninyo kahit hindi nyo pa pinag-isipan. So, ang mananala doon is EPSP. So, it, these are the examples. So, EPSP add up to change resting potential from negative 70 to negative 60. So, it become less negative. So, IPSP naman daw add up to change resting potential from negative 70 to negative 60. 75 millivolts. So, there's a change of 5 millivolts. So, ang constant natin dito, tatandaan, from resting membrane potential is negative 70 millivolts. Ha? So, ito yung mag-decide kung EPSP ba ang mangyari, mag-depolarize ba, or mag-hyperpolarize. No? So, i-compare natin dito, i-compare natin dito yung negative, ah, uh, yung positive 10 millivolts at saka 5 millivolts. So, negative 60 and negative 75. Sino kayang man- Net difference is negative positive five millivolts from negative seventy to negative sixty-five. The resting membrane potential to become less negative. Thus, the result of the membrane is depolarized. When we say depolarized, magkakaroon ng EPSP, magkafire yung neuron. So another example. So EPSP add up change resting potential from negative seventy, which is constant. To negative 68. So, yung EPSP daw ay 2 millivolts lang. Then, we have here the IPSP add up to change the resting potential from negative 70 millivolts to negative 75. So, mas more negative siya. So, i-compare natin yung positive 2 to negative 5 millivolts. 
So net difference is negative 3. So negative 5 plus positive 2, negative 3. Millivolts from negative 70 to negative 73. Ito yung maging output millivolts. Ang mangyari, the resting membrane potential will become more negative. And when we say it become more negative, the membrane is hyperpolarized. Thus, IPSP wins and the neuron will not fire up. Ah, kaya mo palang itolerate yung heat. So, wag natin kailang i-fire up pa ng pain set receptors. I hope na nagigats ninyo. Kapag di yun naitindihan, you could go back to this video or ask me. No? Now, we will go to the integration of the post-synaptic potential and generation of action potential. So, the post-synaptic uh, potential created at single synapse typically have little effect on the firing of the post-synaptic neuron. Again, tandaan natin, yung post-synaptic potential daw na kina sa isang single synapse, may little effect lang sa pag-fire up ng post-synaptic neuron. No? It was once believed that action potentials were generated at axon hillock, but they actually generated at the adjacent section of axon called axon initial segment. Yung part ng neuron no, sa pinakababa ng body, papunta dun sa mahabang wire, papunta sa axon. Ayan. Dun daw nakikreate yung action potential. No? Ang ibig sabihin, dun yung part na naglalaban yung IPSP at EPSP. So, the end result that matters is how EPSP and IPSP cancel each other out near the axon. So, now we will uh, be talking about getting a neuron to fire. So, why, how are we going to fire a neuron? Or how are we going to let it function? So, if it so happens uh, near the axon hillock, no? kung doon nagbabanggaan yung ating EPSP at IPSP at nagka-cancel out, no? yung net combination nila, for example, it depolarizes the membrane, maging less negative. So, meron kailangan siyang ma-reach na threshold potential or threshold of excitation para ma-fire up siya. Hindi necessarily na, kasi tulad ng binanggit kanina, no? uh, maliit lang yung impact, no? lalo na kapag graded response yan. Kung nag-cancel out sila at sobrang baba lang naman, pwede wala ng response or hindi na mag-fire up at all yung neuron. Pero, no? Merong at least specific threshold potential or threshold of excitation na kailangang ma-reach para magkaroon ng tinatawag nating action potential. So, about negative 65 millivolts, so this is the estimated point of millivolts where an action potential is generated. Kung magkakaroon ba ng response yung neuron. So, they are massive but momentarily lasting for 1 millisecond reversal of membrane potential. Ito yung action potential. Membrane become depolarized from about 70 millivolts to about 40 to negative 50 millivolts. So, yung action potential, result na siya ng EPSP at IPSP cancelling out. Massive siya, pero momentary lang. Mabilis lang, no? Lasting for 1 millisecond. So, reversal yan. Parang imagine nyo yung ano, pag i-stretch nyo ng rubber band. Kapag konting stretch nyo lang, hindi siya tatalsik pa harap, No? Parang inanon siya yun. Kapag hinihilan yung rubber band, it's hyper, ah, it's depolarization. Pero kapag mahina lang naman, since graded response, malaraglag yung rubber band. Pero pag hinila nyo siya ng hinilang-hinila na sobrang lakas, no, magkakaroon ng momentarily, no, reversal ng membrane potential or yung rubber band, tatalasik siya paharap. No? Pwede nyo siyang bitawan, no, tatalasik siya or hawakan nyo lang siya, makita nyo yun na mag-i-snap paharap yung rubber band. Ganun yung action potential. They are massive but momentarily, momentary rather, so, membrane become depolarized from 70 millivolts no, to about 40 to 50 millivolts. So, unlike post-synaptic potential, yung EPSP, IPSP, action potential is not graded response. So, hindi siya same na kapag malakas yung intensity no, ng stimulus or ng signal, malakas yung intensity niya. Hindi ganun ang action potential. Their magnitude is not related to the intensity of the stimuli that elicit them. Pwede yung reaction ng bout isa ay hindi pare-pareho. To the contrary, they are all or none response. They either occur in full extent or do not occur at all. So, ito yung kabalik tara ng graded response. Kung yung IPSP natin at EPSP natin ay graded response, yung ating action potential ay or, all, all or none. It's either, no, magbaburst siya ng reversal ng membrane potential, magkakaroon ng firing up ng neuron, or no firing up at all. Again, so we have what we call here the spatial uh, summation. That is the 
bunch of EPSP and IPSP that is combining together at the same time. So, meron din tayong tinatawag na temporal summation wherein the EPSP and IPSP are coming real fast. The next one happens before the previous one fades away. So, hindi pa nga tapos mag-response ng isa, nag-response ng isa. Ano, pag, ano po yung ibig sabihin nun? Yung special summation, ito yung, for example, yung tinatansya nyo kanina, no? Yung hawak nyo yung mainit na wag ng hands, uh, kettle na lang, or mug ng coffee. Pag hinawakan nyo, may part doon na, ah, kaya kong hawakan, so pwede nyo i-hold. So, bunch yun ng EPSP at IPSP. Pero kung kaya nyo i-tolerate, I- tolerate, IPSP yon Hindi mag-send ng pain signals kasi kaya nyo naman hawakan. So, yung temporal summation naman, no? Tuloy-tuloy na sunod-sunod yung EPSP at IPSP. Paano to, no? For example, kayo ay pinapahirapan, no? Or, uh, ano ba yan? Yung expected niyo yung specific stimulus. Uh, binubuhusan ng malamig na tubig, no? Tuloy-tuloy kang binubuhusan and tuloy-tuloy nag-fire up yung EPSP and IPSP sa'yo, no? Nilalamig ka ng nilalamig, pero tuloy-tuloy. No, sunod-sunod. Even bago pa mag-fade yung away, uh, away yung unang uh, EPSP sa'yo na nilalamig ka, nag- nangingirig ng katawan mo, Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung tubig. Nilalamig ka ng nilalamig tuloy-tuloy. Parang ganun. They add up together. Now we will go to the conduction of action potentials. So how are action potential produced and how are they conducted along the axons? Okay. So we have what we call here the Voltage activated or gated ion channels. When a neuron's membrane reaching the threshold of excitation, ito yung binanggit natin kanina yung parang specific peak or negative 65 millivolts, no? Na mag point out na mag-fire up ang neuron, mag-open ang ion channel, no? Sodium ions now, which is previously could not permeate the membrane, can now rush into the neuron. Yung saradong sodium channel, Mag-open na siya at ngayon pwede na siyang mag-rush papasok sa neuron. As a result, a membrane potential goes to about 40 millivolts to 50 millivolts. Grabe, no? A negative 70 millivolts. Pababa siya ng mababa. At tataas, papunta sa positive millivolt. Action potential triggered by depolarization that reaches is the its threshold. For example, andito tayo, ito yung negative 70 millivolts. No? eh, nagkaroon tayo ng threshold yung depolarization, umabot tayo dito sa negative 65, for example because of the threshold, ang mayari magkakaroon ng EPSP so, nagkaroon ng depolarization magpa-fire up ng yung neuron, and kapag nag-fire up siya magkakaroon ng tinatawag na action potential no? it's a sudden and very massive a burst of electrical signal no? Yan yung umabot dito ng almost 30 to 40 millivolts no? yung action potential so, it's a strong depolar- depolarizing stimulus. Now, we will go to the voltage-activated ion channel of the potassium naman. So, when the potassium ion, which is uh, supposedly nasa loob lang sila ng resting membrane potential during a uh, resting state, no, they start going out by being from being inside the neuron. So, they are now rushing out from the neuron. Because of the force of diffusion, when membrane potential is now positive, they are also driven out by electrostatic pressure. So, applic- applicable pa rin sa kanila yung two movements. Wherein, nagkakaroon ng attraction yung different uh, charges, negative to positive charge. No? And nagkakaroon ng force of diffusion. Since naipon sa loob, kakalas na sila. Pupunta na sila sa hand. So, meron din tayong tinatawag na absolute refractory period. So, it lasts from 1 to 2 millisecond. So, it's impossible for another action potential to happen. So, ito yung kapag nag-send na siya ng action potential, no, parang uulong muna siya ulit, no, bago siya magkaroon ng another action potential. It could be 1 to 2 milliseconds. So, hindi agad-agad. So, meron din tayo tinatawag na relative refractory period, wherein, possible naman na magkaroon ng another action potential, pero kailangan ng extra strength stimulation. For example, ito yung tuloy-tuloy na ano, yung binubuhos na malamig na tubig, yung example kanina, or ikaw ay napapaso, no? Tapos hindi mo agad matanggal yung kamay mo kasi naidikit something, no? Sunod-sunod yan. Or ikaw ay napaso, nalapnos ka, so, syempre, damage yung skin mo. Tuloy-tuloy yung mafe-feel mo na action potential na pain. Pain yung signal na ano kasi may sugat, masakit. 
So, ganun yun. Extra, ano yun? Strong na simulation. Okay. So, as the action potential is traveling down the axon, it is non-decremental. When we say non-decremental, hindi siya humihinga habang lumalayo yung travel niya. So, nagta-travel siya na very slowly. No? Siyempre, sudden burst siya. No? Talagang malayo yung inabot niyang millivolts. For example, yung nakita natin kanina yung representation, abot siya ng 45 millivolts, like that. No? Pero non-decremental siya. No? Because compared to IPSP and EAPSP, uh, they are all or nothing no? response. Yung pagre-response niya, kung malakas yun, malakas yung burst out niya. Kung mahina yun, hindi rin ganun kalakasan. Pero hindi siya umihina habang lumalayo. Abot lang sa point na kailangan niya na mag-refract or babalik. No? Action potential only causes those ion channel in one small spot of membrane open. To travel down the axon, it needs to nudge the adjacent an ion channel. No? Para makapag-travel siya, kailangan matamaan niya yung ion channel and mag-open yun ng set. So now we will continue the conduction of action potential in myelinated axons. If you could remember, I have told you that term in the chapter 3 which is called the myelination process yung speeding up ng pagtatransfer ng electrical signals or impulses from the neuron pero how does it happen? so this time, action potential travel rapidly no? action potential simply hops from one node of RAN-VA to another so saltatory conduction ang tawag doon so nodes of RAN-VA ito yung parang bridges sa pagitan ng mga parts ng axons so uh, Signal is a little bit diminished every time na makakating sa dulo, though hindi siya weaker, strong pa rin siya, no? To initiate, to initiate rather, another action potential, no? Pero binuboost siya ng myelin sheet, ay eh, nagkakaroon din ng myelination, no? Since ang myelin, ang myelin sheet ay pinapalibutan ng ependymal cells na parang maraming hair, pinupush siya ng pinupush every time na uh, mag-hop siya sa nose of run VA. So, at the site where the action potential is generated, usually the action hillock, an electrical current depolarizes the neighboring region of action membrane. Action potential travel in only one direction, toward the synaptic terminal. So, one way lang yan, from the cell body itself, direct direct siya, no? From cell body or the action hillock, direct direct siya, papunta sa neighboring region ng action membrane or yung next neuron na papasahan niya. No? Pero, Doon sila mag-meet sa tinatawag na synaptic terminals. So, inactivated sodium channels behind the zone of depolarization prevents the action potential from traveling backwards. So, one way lang siya. Hindi siya pwedeng dire-diretso. Kapag kasi na i out na siya or nag-dire-diretso na siya, nagsasarado na yung channel pa sa palikod. No? So, dire-diretso lang siyang travel. So, if you can see here, this is a representation of an action potential. So, here we can see ito yung action potential. So, ito yung uh, axon natin. Dito siya nagtatravel. Ito yung plasma membrane. So, positive yung nasa labas, negative yung nasa loob. And since positive yung sodium, negative dito, tuloy-tuloy siya nagmumove with the aid of myelinated uh, myelin sheets. Bumibilis siya. And the ependymal cell that is lining to it. Tuloy siya, no? Tinutulak din ng potassium ions. We're in. Kapag nagdire-diretso na sila, yung previous ions dito ay nagsasara na. Ion channel na din. So, hindi sila pwedeng bumalik. So, naipupush. No? Naipupush ng potassium. Na potassium ions and yung sodium ions. Dire-diretso. Para mag-conduct ng action potential or firing up of neuron. So, here we have the evolutionary adaptation of axon structure. So, medyo na ito siya. So, the speed of and action potential increases with the axon's diameter. So, in vertebrates, axons are usually insulated by myelin sheet, which causes action potential speed to increase. Again, yung myelination process. Myelin sheet is made of glia. So, kung natatandaan nyo, binanggit itong oligodendrocytes no? in the CNS and Schwann cells in the PNS, peripheral nervous system and central nervous system. So, Okay, so, so let's continue. So action potentials are formed only at nodes of run VA, and gaps in the myelin sheet where voltage created sodium channels are found. Yun yung gaps, yun yung pagitan ng bilug bilug na Schwann cells, no? My, uh, myelin sheet. Okay, so action potentials in myelinated axon jumps between the nodes of run VA 
in a process called saltatory conduction. Ito yung binanggit natin kanina. No? Wherein para siya nag-i-skip, no? Ganun yung nangyari. Parang pinapasa-pasa siya. Pinapasa-pasa siya, tapos pinapabilis-bilis siya. Tinutulak-tulak siya. Okay. So, Schwann cells. Ayan. Depolarized region. Dito na yan. Ito yung mga ion. So, neurons communicate with other cells at synapses. Synapses, ito yung end part ng isang neuron. At electrical synapses, the electrical current flows from one neuron to another. At chemical synapses, the chemical neurotransmitter carries information across the gap, gap junction. Most synapses are chemical synapses. The presynaptic neuron synthesizes and packages the neurotransmitter in synaptic vessels located in the synaptic terminal. So, yung ano daw, yung mga neurotransmitter, no? Ito yung nag itong neurotransmitter, ito yung ang kinokontin nito, ito yung sodium ions at saka yung potassium ions in different degrees or different combination of chemicals, no? So, sila ay nakapaket, no? In packages called synaptic vesicles. Hindi sila nagka-travel na lumulutang lang. So, synaptic vesicle sila nakasakay, no? And papunta sila sa synaptic terminal. The action potential causes the release of this neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic cleft and is received by the postsynaptic cells. So kapag nakarating na sa pinakadulong terminal, no, uh, magdi-diffuse na siya, hihiwalay na siya, kakalat na, magbubuka na yung synaptic vesicles and pupunta siya sa tinatawag nating synaptic cleft, cleft rather. No? Ito yung sasalo dun sa neurotransmitter na nag-travel sa neuron. No? Ang magre-receive dito is yung postsynaptic cell or yung another cell ng... Ay... <laughs> So, ito yung representation ng pagtatransfer ng uh, electrical signal from one neuron to another wherein marireceive ng another neuron yung synapse sa kanyang dendrites no? from the axon of another neuron. So, ayan. Okay, so here is another representation going to another part. So, ito yung part ng diffusion. Ayan. Nag-diffuse na dito at nai-release na mula sa synaptic vesicle yung neurotransmitter. Tasaruhin sila dito ng uh, ion channels, no? So, kasalo yun sila dito. So, ayan. may specific ion, ano, ion channels lang dito. Hindi pwedeng iba-iba din yung ion channel. Ikaw ay sodium, sodium lang din tatanggapin ko. Kapag ikaw ay potassium, potassium lang din yung ion channel. Ganun siya. So, action potential. The representation. Okay, so ayan yung vesicles and i-receive siya ng mga receptors dito sa another neuron. Okay, now we will now proceed to the synaptic transmission. Kung makikita nyo, napaka-technical ng previous part ng ating chapter, tama? <laughs> so, uh, kung naitindihan nyo na yung process, no? Uh, from the neuron itself, you know, going and transferring the neurotransmitter to another neuron, we will now go to the synaptic transmission wherein the chemical transmission of signals among neuron. So, chemical signals. So, medyo less technical dito. Though, yes, uh, uh, familiar na kayo sa ibang mga terms dito. Mas madali na to kaysa din sa previous na pwede sa natin. If your nervous system, in your nervous system rather, we have what we call the chemicals called neurotransmitters. So, neurons produce these neurotransmitters. So, may iba-ibang part na responsible pa sa pag-release ng neurotransmitters. If you could remember the substantia nigra, substantia nigra is responsible for creating the dopamine. No? But substantia nigra is made up of neurons too. So, may mga other parts din ng nervous system na nag-create ng neurotransmitters. So, there are more than 100 neurotransmitters belonging to five groups such as acetylcholine, biogenic amines or bioamines, amino acid, neuropeptides, and gases. So, ito yung five groups. No? A single neurotransmitter may have more than a dozen different receptors or receivers. Neurotransmitters are packed into synaptic vesicles. Ito yung binanggit ko kanina parang bubble na dun sila nakasakay bago sila i-release or mag-diffuse papunta sa receptors. Synaptic vesicles are found at the terminal buttons. No? Exocytosis yung tawag sa pag-release ng neurotransmitter. Okay. Again, Yung, yung part, yung sa dulong part, wherein magbubuka na yung synaptic vesicles, no, i-release na siya to the receptors. Ang tawag doon ay exocytosis. So, ito yung five major uh, 
neurotransmitters natin. Pero nahati pa siya sa mga ibang neurotransmitters that we are not very familiar. Pero yung iba, I'm sure na marunod na. First, we have here the acetylcholine. No? So, acetylcholine is responsible for the activation of the cells and its functions. So, we have here the amino acids. Kung dito, familiar na kayo, the GABA, the gamma amino butyric acid, and we have here the glutamate. Glutamate is one of the major uh, food of the neurons. We have here the glycine. No? We have here the biogenic amines. Familiar kayo dito sa iba na to, no? We have here the norepinephrine. We have here the dopamine, the serotonin, familiar kayo serotonin, which is the happy hormone. We also have here the neuropeptides, which is a very diverse group, which only have uh, two of which are shown. No? Kasi ang dami. So, substance P and met and kefalin. So, which is a form of endorphin, a morphine inside the body, painkiller. And we have here the gases such as the nitric oxide. So, ito yung mga major neurotransmitters. Sila yung mga uh, sinisend sa electrical si as electrical signals. Okay. So, action potentials travel down the axon in which is synapse. This causes another ions, which is a calcium, to open up. No? So, calcium ion with the positive charge its channel no for in nagko sa synaptic vesicles para mag-join sa presynaptic membrane so kapag nag-open up yung calcium na nasa dulo siya ng ano nasa dulo siya ng axon terminal no ito yung nagte-trigger sa synaptic vesicles para mag-join doon sa presynaptic membrane so yung vesicles i-release nila yung neurotransmitters in synaptic cleft kung if you could remember the release of neurotransmitter is called exocytosis Neurotransmitters get passed on to the next neuron. So what happened next? What happens next rather? It's like pay, playing pasa pasa lang. So kung pabalikan natin where we started, neurotransmitter binds with the receptor. So kung nirelease na siya, mag-bind siya sa kanyang sariling receptor which causes an ion channel to open. So para mag-open, kailan manage niya. No? Matamaan niya ng konti. Yung ion channel then it will open. If sodium channel open, the sodium ions enter the neuron it polarizes the membrane, which causes EDSP, neuron. If chloride channel open, chloride ions enter neuron, which hyperpolarizes membrane, which can cause IPSP. If potassium channels are open, the potassium ions leave the neuron, which hyperpolarizes the membrane, which also causes IPSP. Okay, so what happens naman to the leftover transmitters? Why, why are we saying that there are leftover transmitters? We all know that there are instances that there could be hormonal imbalances in the body. And when hormones imbalance, there are excess specific neurotransmitters released in the body, which are in the form of hormones. Kapag sumobra yan, no, uh, it's possible na masobrahan yung receive ng uh, receptors or meron tayong mga different processes such as the following. First, we have what we call the reuptake. The neurotransmitter returns to the presynaptic bottom. So you can see there is an action potential here na release yung neurotransmitter. No? Pero hindi lahat ay kailangan and pumabalik sila. No? Your transmitter return to the presynaptic bottoms. Your transmitter molecules, no? transport proteins, and pinabalik sila sa kanilang vesicles. So meron din tayong tinatawag na degradation. No? So isa lang yung isang mga instance na pwede mangyari. Ha? Uh, since merong cleft or merong pagitan between the dulo na isang presynaptic neuron at saka ng postsynaptic neuron, no? Yung nagse-send at saka nagre-receive, no? Pwede ring mag-degradate. What does it mean? Your transmitter broken apart in the synapse by enzymes. Kapag too much siya at hindi na siya kayang ma-receive, no? Hindi na siya naibalik, no? Pwede siyang mag-degradate. Kung makita niyo dito, meron tayong tinatawag na enzymatic degradation, no? Iba broken part na lang siya ng synapses ay ng enzymes, no? Uh, because hindi na siya kailangan. So, let us now talk about the neurotransmitters. So, I hope you understand that. Uh, if you are a little bit confused or nalilito or nabibilisan, balikan nyo lang yung video. Okay, so neurotransmitters, these are the chemicals in the nervous system. So, let's focus on them at this moment. Now, we go to the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a common neurotransmitter in vertebrates and invertebrates. So, ano ang purpose ng acetylcholine? So, acetylcholine, organic chemical din siya na, uh, na nagpa-function sa brain and sa body natin. So, ito ay 
if you send the chemical messages, ito ay nire-release ng nerve cells para mag-send ng signal sa ibang cells. No? Uh, papunta sa muscles, papunta sa glands. So, ito yung ano, chief neurotransmitter sa ating parasympathetic nervous system. No? So, ito yung tumutulong para mag-contract ng smooth muscle, nagda-dilate ng blood vessel, ganyan. yung bodily secretions mo, naging slow, lower ng heart rate mo. So, ayan. Also, memory formation and learning. Vertebrates has two major classes of acetylcholine receptor. One is ligand-gated and one is metabotropic. Okay, so yung ligand-gated, uh, isa siyang ion. Uh, ion channel din na nag din ng mga ions na makapasok sa another neurons. Such as ano ba yung mga ions na pwede maka-enter sa neurons. Uh, we have here the sodium, potassium, yung calcium na nabanggit natin kanina, chloride. Ayan. And we also have here the metabotrophic. So, yung metabotrophic naman ay uh, receptor din no, ng ACP no, or acetylcholine na tumutulong sa metabolic steps at saka nagmamodulate din siya ng cell activities. So, hmm. so, usually sila ang responsible kapag nagkakaroon ng problem uh, wherein example is the Alzheimer's disease no? kapag hindi na sila fully nagpa-function or nagkakaroon ng problem sa transferring yung neurotransmitters no? pwede itong two receptors na ito ang nagkakaroon ng problem yung ligand gated and yung metabotropic or in the metabolism and yung transfers ng uh, neurotransmitter cells We also have here the amino acids which is another set of neurotransmitters. So, amino acid neurotransmitters are active in the CNS and PNS. They are known to fun they're known fun to function in CNS are the glutamate, no? the gamma amino glutaric acid, which is the GABA, and the glycine. If you would know, amino acid are the building blocks of protein. So, compound siya na marami namang ano, purpose sa ating body. So, kailangan siya uh, para sa pag-build ng or pag-synthesize ng hormones and ng neurotransmitters. So, siguro na-encounter nyo na itong glutamate. Glutamate, which uh, one of the main functions is connected to the excitatory postsynaptic potential. Uh, or in yung GABA naman, yung GABA naman ay chip in inhibitory neurotransmitter. So, pang-inhibit naman siya. Kung yung glutamate ay excitatory, Itong gamma ay pang inhibit. Itong glycine naman, yung pinakalas, ito yung ano, uh, most, uh, it, ito yung simplest amino acid. So, kapag nagkaroon ng problem uh, sa pag-receive nitong mga types ng hormones, ng neurotransmitter na to, pwede tayong magkaroon ng seizures and Huntington's disease. Uh, medyo nakakatakot yung Huntington's disease. Eh? Because if you're familiar with this, <laughs> ang another abbreviation nito as IHD, Huntington disease. So, ano siya, genetic disorder siya na medyo fatal kasi pwedeng magkaroon ng progressive breakdown ng nerve cells sa brain kapag nagkaroon ka nitong Huntington's. So, anong yari? So, ide-deteriorate niya yung physical at saka mental ability mo. So, pag-isip at saka yung paggalaw mo during your prime working years and wala pa tong cure. So, kaya mahirap na maubusan tayo ng amino acid, magkaroon ng problem itong mga main, uh, neurotransmitters na to. We also have here the biogenic animals. Dito included yung mga kilalang kilala natin na neurotransmitters. Diba? We have here the epinephrine, uh, most commonly known as adrenaline. So maraming purpose ng epinephrine. So between life and death, so nagsasend yan ng napakaraming uh, neurotransmitters sa atin para for survival, also uh, connected to the metabolism of the body. Ayan. Pero din tayong tinatawag na norepinephrine. Kapag sinabi natin norepinephrine, activation niya, activation of the brain and body for action. So, it is also secreted in response to stress. So, para mas maintindihan natin siya, itong norepinephrine ay nag-act both as a stress hormone at saka neurotransmitter no, na nagsisend ang signal sa every cell or nerve cell. So, nire-release sa blood as stress hormone kapag yung brain mo ay naka-perceive ng isang stressful event. No? So, next, we have here the dopamine. 
So, kanina, na-encounter natin dopamine and medyo na-review na siya. So, dopamine plays a major role in the motivational component of reward-motivated behavior. Situation ng dopamine uh, may cause problems or, or added symptoms in schizophrenia. So, familiar na kami ng kayo sa schizophrenia. So, may schizophrenia at uh, nagkaroon ng over-secretion ng dopamine, because nagkakaroon ng imbalances sa ating neurotransmitters, no? Pwede kayong magkaroon ng hallucinations at delusions. So, yung uh, hallucinations and delusions sa schizophrenia ay tied sa dopamine. Also, with the Parkinson's disease, and familiar naman kayo with the story of Roberto de Orta, wherein yung substantia nigra niya, hindi na makapagreks ng dopamine, kaya nagkaroon siya ng Parkinson's disease, no? Next, we have here the serotonin. Helps uh, regulate mood and social behavior, appetite, digestion, sleep, memory, and sexual desire, and functions. So, naparaming function ng serotonin, tinatawag din siyang happy hormones. No? Bakit siya happy hormones? Kasi, uh, purpose, uh, ang isa rin sa mga purpose niya is connected to rewards, no? condition, and even yung physiological process, such as yung vomiting, serotonin ang nare-release para, di ba minsan, uh, involuntary ang pag-vomit, nare-release kayo ng release ng serotonin. Mm -hmm. They are active in CNS and PNS, peripheral and central nervous system. So, we also have here the gases such as nitric oxide and carbon monoxide that are local regulators in the PNS. Okay, I mean, di pa ako naisama dito. So, we have here the nit nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, and we also have hydrogen sulfide. Yun pa yung isang gas, no, na uh, nag-act as neurotransmitters. So, involved sila sa neurogenic relaxation, no, at saka response sa uh, internal anal inspector. If you could know yung pag-utot. <laughs> so, pharmacology of the synaptic transmission and behavior. So, uh, let's go back to the Roberto Diorta's case related to dopamine function. So, meron daw kasing two effects ang drugs in the synaptic transmission. So, pupunta tayo sa effects ng drugs. So, first, a drug can be an agonist or antagonist. When we say agonist, it facilitates the effect of neurotransmitters. Sinabi natin agonist, no, ang ginagawa nito mga agonist na drugs or chemicals, nagbabind sila sa synaptic uh, receptors. So, uh, ini-imitate nila yung specific neurotransmitters at magbabind sila sa receptors niya para mag-increase yung effect ng neurotransmitters na yun. While the antagonist naman, no, ini-inhibit niya yung effect ng neurotransmitters. Nagbabind pa rin siya sa receptors, pero ang ginagawa niya, dinedecrease niya yung effect ng isang neurotransmitter. So parang hinaharangan niya. So agonist, pinapacilitate niya, tinutulungan niya, ini-improve niya, or pinapa-intense niya yung neurotransmitter. Antagonist, ini-inhibit niya, pinipigilan niya, no? or dinidecrease na yung effect ng neurotransmitter. So, agonist, ayun yung sinabi ko kanina, synthesis of neurotransmitter, it helps with the release, it obstructs autoreceptors. Yung agonist naman, yung pag-obstruct ng autoreceptor, ito yung negative na pagbalik ng neurotransmitter din. No? Uh, sa signal transduction, uh, in-obstruct niya yung autoreceptor para ma-receive lahat ng receptors yung neurotransmitter. So, usually, tends to pretend to be a neurotransmitters and prevents reuptake. So, reuptake, ito yung pagbalik no, ng neurotransmitter doon sa vesicle. So, while the antagonist naman, no, antagonist obstacle to the synthesis, pinipigilan niya na mag-combine yung mga neurotransmitters sa yung receptors, hindi makakapasok. No? Naging obstacle din siya sa neurotransmitter release. No? Pinupul na yung autoreceptors, hindi ibalik niya, no? pinipigilan niya. So, binablock niya yung mga receptors. Parang siyang bida at siya kontra bida. So, now we are going to talk about how some drugs work in the brain. So, hindi ko nalalatin ng drugs na yung effects nila. Pero, itatry lang natin sila i-categorize if they are agonist, antagonist, and their effects. So, first, we have here the cocaine. I think you are familiar with it, though hindi nyo alam yung tura o yung iba kung alam yung tura. So, cocaine is an agonist of norepinephrine and dopamine. So, kung agonist siya, no? Ini-increase niya, tinutulungan niya yung norepinephrine sa dopamine, no? Or, in any instances, no, nagpre-pretend siya as norepinephrine and dopamine. So, the cocaine prevents reuptake of leftover norepinephrine and dopamine. 
So therefore, the effect of these neurotransmitters are released. Ginagawa niya talaga, increase niya, no? Yung effect ng norepinephrine at dopamine, no? Nag-act siya as norepinephrine and dopamine. Okay. So, ang other term pala sa cocaine, if you are not familiar, it's also called some called sometimes as coke, no? Yes, C O K E. Yun ang ibang tawag minsan sa cocaine. So, strong stimulant siya na ginagamit for recreational drug, no? Usually sinisinghot siya, no? Ini-inhale siya sa smoke, pwede rin siyang tinutunaw tapos ini-inject sa veins, no? Mental effect may include a uh, intense feeling of happiness, no? Kasiya, sexual arousal, loss of contact with reality or agitation, pwede violent din. <laughs> so, please do not use drugs. Next now, we are talking about the botulinum toxin or in short, botox. Yes, ito yung ginagawa kapag sa dermatologist kapag nagpapabotox. If you are knowledgeable regarding it, so ano bang ginagawa ng botox sa katawan? So, pinaparalyze na yung specific part ng skin para ma-prevent yung aging. No? So, but for your information, botulinum toxin is the most deadliest poison or substance in the world. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of drug, pero very small dosage of it is safe as long as it's not ingested and only applied in the uh, topical area of the body such as the skin. So it prevents acetylcholine from being released. Therefore, effect of the neurotransmitters are decreased. Since pinaparalyze na yung certain muscles, pinapabagal na yung aging dun sa specific uh, cells. No? Okay, so medyo nakakabigla siya no, na yung botox pala nagagam sa dermatologist is one of the most poisonous substances. It's very poisonous that one gram is enough to kill a 70 kilogram person. Mm -hmm. Na-discover yan actually uh, sa, ano, sa pagkain noon. Yung napapanis sa pagkain. No? Uh, parang alam ko sa sausage yata yun. Uh, yung miss, uh, uh, nagkaroon ng food poisoning dahil sa ano, maling pag-prepare ng sausage. No? Ang nangyari, nalason yung mga taong kumain noon. And doon na-discover yung butalin yung toxin. No? which is the most <laughs> or the deadliest poison. Okay, pero nagagamit siya in other areas of science such as nga, dermatology. <laughs> and last we will be talk ay na ibang ko na pala kanina yung cocaine. So we will be talking here about the uh, amphetamines. So it's also same as to the cocaine or the coke, it's a dopamine agonist. So in increase niya yung uh, neurotransmitter effect and it acts itself as a neurotransmitter. So, it gives you transient conditions or temporary condition that resembles schizophrenia, no? such as hallucination, delusion din. Uh, medyo nakakatakot. In large dosage, it could kill your uh, nerve cells. No? Okay, so, amphetamine is a nervous system, central nervous system stimulant. So, usually kasi, itong amphetamine, ginamit to noon as a uh, treatment sa Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD. No? Ginamit din to na pang treat sa narcolepsy at saka sa obesity, no? So, pero yun lang, too much use of amphetamines is dangerous to your 